remote viewing exercises have taken place for people to try and observe that which is on the moon. I'm seeing a lot of rocks. My God, it's real. Could the Bible's book of Revelation really be referring to a galactic war? Was this book written around 95 AD by humans actually about a galactic war? No. Hello lovely people, my name is Emma. Welcome back to my channel and welcome if you are new. This is how I've decided to dress today. I will be taking no further questions. I call this look Grandpa's First Ren Fair. Also I did not decide to do this with my hair today. I went to bed with it damp and it keeps naturally just doing this. It's very bouncy though. Ancient Aliens. I asked in a previous video if you guys would like me to check out Ancient Aliens and a lot of you said yes. A lot of you said, please God, don't, but not as many. <laughs> However, I have taken your warnings into consideration. I picked out two episodes that interested me that looked pretty unique to anything I've seen before. I didn't want to see anything standard, gross, like qanon -y. I don't want anything with a pyramid. I definitely watched some ancient aliens pyramid-themed documentaries when I was a kid. The last thing I want is freaking ancient aliens to bring up some kind of repressed trauma. Let's see what this kooky show is all about. It seems to really polarize people. I mean, people were begging both for me to watch it and for me to not watch it. Something remarkable happened to Albert Einstein. Something which suggests that Einstein was communicating with a realm outside our galaxy. That's right. This episode that I chose from season five is all about Albert Einstein. Specifically Einstein's brain. This episode seems to basically exist to almost take the credit away from Einstein for his theories. <laughs> this is not a concept I had ever heard of before. Turns out people have written books about this theory. A realm that some ancient astronaut theorists believe may be designed by extraterrestrials. Quite a few people in the comments suggested different ways to play a drinking game while watching Ancient Aliens. Something that became obvious to me very quickly is that if you took a drink every time the narrator said ancient astronaut theorists, uh, you would be dead halfway through your first episode. Albert Einstein was very adept in putting himself into altered states of consciousness through what he called his thought experiments. Yes, so Einstein performing thought experiments is him entering a place most of us won't go, which kind of suggests that we could Although that is also sort of the opposite of what this episode suggests about his brain being special to allow him to do that. A thought experiment, by the way, if you're not familiar, is literally just the process of laying out a hypothetical situation. Yes, Einstein was very uniquely creative in being able to imagine himself in situations that are really removed from the human experience, or at least that's, you know, what he said. And that's pretty awesome. That's not his so-called thought experiments. A thought experiment is just where you're like, okay, here's my hypothesis. What if it worked like this? That's the thought experiment. It's not like a magical device. Thought experiments enable you to visually or geometrically approach a problem. Visually? or geometrically. Einstein authored four papers that would redefine mankind's perception of the universe. If you were wondering, the program does not discuss any of Einstein's mistakes or incorrect hypotheses. <laughs> One of the things I really like about Einstein is that he is the epitome of genius. He did have this incredibly creative way of viewing the universe. What he's contributed to physics is insane, but he also made mistakes and then he referred to his mistakes later in his life and was like, man, that was a big fuck up. His idea of a universal constant, because he didn't hold with the idea that the universe could be expanding, he referred to as the biggest blunder of his career. And I like that. I think it's important and humanizing to Einstein's story to include the fact that he wasn't a perfect being receiving as a... Uh, whoever the fuck that was said in Ancient Aliens, uh, information from on high, he was a human working things out with logic and science and a, and a beautifully fantastic creative brain, but he was still a human and flawed. And so sometimes his theories were flawed. I understand that that does make the receiving information from another plane of existence theory struggle slightly. <laughs> this was an amazing array of things to do for a scientist in, in an entire career. The fact that Einstein did it all in one year 
is virtually miraculous. As happens so often when we look into conspiracy theorists and or the extremely fundamentalist religious, there's that little, that little hint of if it seems far-fetched, if I imagine the probability is small, it's probably impossible or basically close enough. There's nothing miraculous about what he discovered. It was discoverable. He was a brilliant man. There's nothing miraculous about that. It's hard for you and me to imagine, guy who was sitting on that chair in Ancient Aliens, because we don't have Einstein's genius. I appreciate that it's easier to think of stuff like that as basically miraculous, but he was just a, a brilliant man, and we have to just live with not being that brilliant. <laughs> what was the source behind Einstein's incredible insight? Is it possible, as ancient astronaut theorists contend? <laughs> that was just water. Stay hydrated, kids. I literally typed in cute shot glass to Google, and this is what came up, so I own it now. Was he tapping into some type of advanced field of knowledge? It's very possible Einstein used this type of technology. Jason, I don't want to start an argument with you, but I object to your use of very possible. <laughs> Jason's written a book. For over 15 years, Mr. Martell has been one of the leading researchers and lecturers. Leading lectures? Yeah, that makes sense. I just can't read. He's been one of the leading researchers and lectures specialising in ancient civilization technologies. But that's not a real thing. He's responsible, apparently, for a movie called Ancient Astronauts, The Gods from Planet X. There's no videos on IMDb, there's no trailer. I can't believe there's nowhere to watch this online. I wanted to look at his books. He's written a book called Knowledge Apocalypse, which I assume is related to this. This is amazing. They've left the book up for sale, but the description says, This book is out of date. Please buy updated expanded by 100 pages edition here. This version has been expanded 100 pages. <laughs> this book provides an easy and understandable gateway for introducing newcomers to the ancient astronaut theory and the true nature of our human history. Most ancient cultures speak of a time when their gods visited them. They never say their gods came from across the ocean or from the mountains. They always came down from the skies. Was ancient man visited by gods or extraterrestrials? No. <laughs> Thank you for asking. Knowledge Apocalypse is a disclosure of something hidden from the majority of mankind in an era dominated by falsehood and misconception. So now we know Jason's a trustworthy source. When we look at the people themselves who are the, the giants on whose shoulders we stand, what they are saying is that this information wasn't theirs, but that something beyond them allowed them to receive this information and give it to the world. It feels kind of rude to me as well. It's a bit like disrespectful to be like, Einstein couldn't have come up with this. No human could have come up with this. Why is it possible for ancient astronauts to discover information about the universe, but not humans. All the knowledge of the universe exists in the cosmos. Maybe Einstein was able to access that knowledge. He didn't know how he did this, but his being knew it. That was a lot of words to say absolutely nothing. It's Giorgio! So, something funny that I learned about um, Giorgio, who I was only aware of previously via the meme. Apparently he has no academic background related to any field, even tangentially related to the show. He was a, a bodybuilder promoter, and he has a bachelor's degree in sports information. Not that there's any credential that validates ancient alien theories. Typically, this kind of person has worked identifying UAPs for some government or, you know, something like that. The man who performed the autopsy removed Einstein's brain. He actually took Einstein's brain out of his head and he put it in a cookie jar. I don't think that's a cookie jar. And he began to give slices of it to neurobiologists and neurophysiologists to see if they could understand what it was about Einstein that was different. Something that makes me want to grind my teeth seeing pieces of brain? I don't know. It's just kind of, there is something a little bit gross about fascinating, but uh, brain. Our most important artifact is right here. Einstein's brain. Einstein's brain it's an amazing representation of not only a medical specimen, but one that represents one of the greatest minds in the world. I feel really sorry for the kind of, those kind of people that end up on this show. They're like normal people. 
that are like excited to demonstrate this incredible artifact. We have the remains of Einstein's brain here and we're being asked to teach people about what makes it unique. That is so fabulous. I can't help but wonder if they knew that it was going to be used for a program arguing that Einstein meditated his way into another dimension where ancient aliens had left this information for him to find. Probably not, right? They deserve better than to be on ancient aliens, is what I'm trying to say. In 2011, the Mutter Museum received 46 slides of Einstein's brain. I'm not German, obviously, but I think based on the umlaut it should be Mutter Museum. I know I have German viewers. Let me know in the comments. The best way to describe his brain was that it looked like the brain of a young person. At age 76, he has beautiful preservation of the neurons and no degenerative disease of any kind. So this is a big sticking point. One of the amazing things about Einstein's brain, apparently, is that it looks remarkably young. He has the brain of a young man, so they say. No degenerative diseases that come with age. All the fascinating information about his brain certainly suggests he was a unique thinker, which would allow him, certainly, to think creatively in his thought experiments. To me, it's like, maybe that does give us some insight into how he was able to come up with his ideas, and not, well, clearly, he had the brain of a person able to communicate with ancient alien technology. Because where the fuck do you get that from? These are actual images taken in 1955 of Albert Einstein's brain. You can see the red line is relatively expanded compared to normal brains, marking the expansion of the parietal lobe. The parietal lobe of uh, Albert Einstein is truly anomalous. Everyone in this show has fucking amazing hair. The fact that this is an episode about Einstein as well, who has famously incredible hair. Is that how I fix this? I go on Ancient Aliens? No, oh, hey buddy. What's up? You wanna talk about cereal? That's kinda weird. Unless. This video is sponsored by Magic Spoon. Magic Spoon is a cereal that is excellent for a variety of dietary lifestyles. It is high protein, keto friendly, gluten free. It's grain free, soy free, wheat free, and naturally flavored. If you have unique requirements, if you're on a special diet and you really crave something tasty, Magic Spoon is a great option. The cereal has zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, and four to five grams of net carbs in each serving, and is 140 calories per serving. The Magic Spoon treats contain one gram of sugar, 11 to 12 grams of protein, and one to two grams of net carbs in each serving. They are 130 calories per serving and very high in fiber. Click the link below to get your very own Magic Spoon cereal today. You can build your own custom box with all of the best flavors you love using my code Emma Thorne for five dollars off. You can choose from the best-selling flavors cocoa, fruited, frosty, peanut butter, and maple waffle, plus other awesome flavors including honey nut, blueberry muffin, birthday cake, cinnamon roll, and chocolate chip cookie. You can also add any of the cereal treats to your order. My absolute favorite at the moment is the blueberry muffin treat bars. Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, it is backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. So click the link down below or scan my QR code, use the code EMMATHORN for $5 off, or go to magicspoon.com slash EMMATHORN. Save $5 on your order today. And for my Canadian fans and fellow Brits, Magic Spoon does ship to Canada and the UK. We're included. Thank you. Is it possible, as ancient astronaut theorists believe, <laughs> that his advanced brain allowed him to receive and decipher messages from an otherworldly realm? I mean, it's as possible as, like, a centaur delivered him this information in the night and he never told anyone about it. Is it possible that Einstein was eating crackers and cheese in the bath when he came up with the theory of relativity? That's one thing I learned about ancient aliens. It is mostly just questions, just open-ended hypotheticals that no one has any answers for, rendering the whole thing kind of pointless. Was he potentially given some type of leg up, maybe some type of extraterrestrial gene? Are there individuals out there? that may have DNA sequences that we're not familiar with. Like that person with a monkey? What was that footage supposed to represent? <laughs> yeah, so no, one of the many hypotheticals that they come up with in this is maybe at some point an alien, I guess, banged a human and there's like super smart alien DNA hidden in some people like Einstein and that's how come he's so smart. 
See, the reason I didn't come up with the theory of relativity is because I didn't have the special DNA. I didn't have the leg up. I didn't have the opportunities that he had because I wasn't born with the special gene. That's what this is, right? This is why am I not as smart as Einstein? Why have I not done the great things that Einstein did and other smart people? Well, I just didn't, I wasn't lucky enough to have the gene. Or maybe they think because they're theorising this and writing books about ancient aliens, they do have the gene and it's just given them access to insane conspiracy theories? Is it possible that they're a little bit more than human? No. Thank you for asking. How did the 42-year-old physicist achieve such a seemingly perfect blueprint of the universe? But it wasn't. He was wrong about a bunch of things. That's okay. Th this, this makes sense, right? In the context of this show, and this idea of ancient aliens, he got this information from another source. The idea of how could he come up with something so perfect? If it, if he did just lay down a 100% correct theory of the universe and nothing had been able to disprove any aspect of it ever, that would be pretty incredible and I can see why people would think ancient aliens or whatever. He was just smarter than most people. Maybe he had a unique brain. Maybe he was just incredibly healthy maybe he just had an incredibly healthy brain and was really lucky that way like maybe he was super smart and studied really hard those things make much more sense when you factor in that he was wrong about some stuff he was right about a lot of things and that's incredible he didn't download this perfect information from another dimension it feels insane to have to say that, by the way. <laughs> Across time and space, we have pockets of people who have received tremendous amounts of information, which really have propelled civilization along. What do you mean across time and space? Across space, we have people who have received this information. Where are the humans across space that have received this amazing information? Is he just covering his bases so that we include, like, the people on the ISS? Like, what is he talking about? Just in case we do another trip to the moon before this episode airs? What do you mean people across time and space? Okay, the Earth moves in space, but that's such a weird fucking way to phrase it. These people are fucking bananas. Except for the nice doctors and museum people that are just excited to show off Einstein's brain. They get a pass. Obviously the question then is, do they have special brains? Or is this just something which happens by concentrating on the right thing to access this information? Obviously that is the question. Not, what the fuck are you talking about? This is insane. <laughs> is it possible that Albert Einstein's practice of thought experiments allowed his genetically advanced brain to receive messages from a metaphysical realm? No. Thank you for asking. As ancient astronaut theorists believe. <laughs> dude, taking a shot of water. I don't know why, I just called you dude. <laughs> dude! <laughs> taking a shot of water as like a drinking game when I review crazy media is an amazing way to stay hydrated. Nikola Tesla was someone who wrote extensively about using very, very powerful visualizations. In fact, he said that he was able to uh, visualize a motor and then actually run research and development R&D on the motor in his mind. Well, clearly, that allowed him to access the realm of ancient alien information. Every famous genius, according to these guys, Einstein, Tesla, Niels Bohr, um, Newton, Galileo, Darwin, they all either had magic brain and or developed visualization techniques that allowed them to access another realm in space via ancient astronaut technology. What if everyone who has this ancient extraterrestrial knowledge theory has aphantasia. If they just aren't able to visualize things in their imagination, it would make sense why they think this is basically witchcraft. <laughs> New conspiracy theory just dropped. Ancient alien aphantasia. It is an irrefutable fact that mathematics is the language of the universe. So if Ramanujan's formulae do in fact check out, who knows what the potential is of those conclusions? It could be life-altering. It could be revolutionary. Giorgio is like an expert in deepities. Deepities nuts. <laughs> hey! That joke works better in an American accent. Because you have the soft T that sounds like a D. Deepities. Whereas I say deepities. And you don't say T's nuts. You say D's nuts. 
What was I talking about? Giorgio and his deepities. Yeah, everything he says is basically nothing, but he says it with such grandeur, and it's life-changing, spiritual universe, incredible, just bullshit. <laughs> he says nothing of any value in this whole pro- in the two episodes that I watched, he says nothing that means anything. Could it be possible that Socrates, Nikola Tesla, Srinivasa Ramanujan, as well as other geniuses in human history, were using altered states of consciousness to access an alien realm, a realm that some ancient astronaut theorists and the Akashic Record is a term uh, that basically the idea behind it is that all of the information in the universe is pre-existing and an individual can actually tap in to that information. Well, if it's in an ancient Hindu text, then it's clearly real. Case closed, am I right? The show goes on to talk about quantum entanglement, what Einstein called spooky action at a distance. It's not that easy to explain, but essentially when quantum particles are entangled, they lose their um, independence. Please do correct me in the comments. Last time I wangled a bit about quantum mechanics, people elaborated in the comments beautifully, it was very helpful. Once you measure a property on one particle, the unpredictability of that measurement affects the outcome of a measurement of a different particle. So I believe the ancient alien astronaut whatever theorists uh, extrapolation from this is the idea that information could be shared between two non-local particles. So I guess one particle in your genius brain and one particle in your other realm, in between those, ancient alien technology transfers the information. Which again, seems like a huge leap to me, but I'm not an ancient astronaut theorist. So what do I know? What we have to remind ourselves is that we are made of stardust. Thanks, Giorgio. That makes me feel pretty good. It doesn't mean anything, but it's nice. It's not only real, but it can explain to us so much weirdness in this world, which we still call paranormal. And this would include the idea of telepathy and remote viewing. Oh, that guy says it's real. So... Discussion over. This is the part of the episode where they talk about remote viewing, and I can kind of see how an ancient astronaut theorist, you better be drinking water right now or I'll be furious with you. I can see how an ancient astronaut theorist would liken quantum entanglement to remote viewing, because it's the idea of something here affecting or interacting with something here or information being shared between two non-local points. I kind of get it. It's stupid. Remote viewing is not real, as demonstrated by everyone ever who has tried to prove it or test it. Remote viewing is the practice of using deep concentration to visualize locations or objects beyond sight and sound. That's right. By simply thinking hard enough, you can see things that you can't see. Once again, I'm starting to think these theorists just don't have the ability to visualize objects. And if someone can imagine something that's in another room, they're like, holy shit, how can they see into that other room? I don't even know how this relates to ancient aliens at all. Like the further we get into every episode, the more I'm like, how do the aliens fit in here again? It, with their technology is the answer. If you're ever wondering, even psychic powers are actually ancient alien technology in the concept of this show. The United States initiated a program called Project Stargate to train individuals to access a higher realm of knowledge. And of course, if the United States government tested it, that means it's real. I understand the fascination with secret government projects, anything that is hidden from the public. The reason that these things are hidden from everyone including the public, obviously, is usually because they're looking into some kind of military application. And if they find some military application of something, they don't want another government to discover the same thing or to learn from their experiments because then the advantage that they're trying to gain is gone, right? So even if it turns out to be absolutely nothing, it will be secret at least while they're testing it. I know that something being a secret government project sounds like it gives it some kind of credibility. Sci-fi, fantasy, stuff like Stranger Things is cool. And sometimes there are secret government projects developing real technology, like 
new kinds of aircraft or nuclear weapons, but that doesn't mean everything that the government ever investigates secretly is going to pan out, let's just say. That being said, let's have a quick look at Stargate. The Stargate project was a secret US Army unit established in 1978 at Fort Meade, Maryland. It was established to investigate the potential for psychic phenomena in military and domestic intelligence applications. The Stargate project's work primarily involved remote viewing, the purported ability to psychically see events, sites, or information from a great distance. The unit was small scale, comprising about 15 to 20 individuals, and was run out of an old leaky wooden barracks. So already, that demystifies some of the project. The Stargate project was terminated and declassified in 1995, after a CIA report concluded that it was never useful in any intelligence operation. Information provided by the program was vague, and included irrelevant and erroneous data, and there were suspicions of interjudge reliability. This is fun, allegedly the reason that the US started investigating the concept of remote viewing, and this kind of psychic phenomena was based on rumour or innuendo from second-hand or tertiary reporting on psychic research in foreign countries attributed to both reliable and unreliable disinformation sources from the Soviet Union. Oh yes, in Russia we are investing a lot into psychic remote viewing. You should also, American government. I don't know what a Russian accent sounds like, I'm really sorry. <laughs> the US government have funded remote viewing programs, as did the Soviets. Well. Did the Soviets? Remote viewing exercises have taken place for people to try and observe that which is on the moon, on Mars. I'm seeing a lot of rocks and dust. There's a fair amount of dust. My God, it's real. Why would the government spend millions of dollars in areas like remote viewing unless there is some type of valid need? Because they were bamboozled by dodgy Soviet intel. He kind of gets away with this by saying millions of dollars on things like, which is ambiguous and subjective, but let's remember that allegedly this unit studying, the, the Stargate project studying remote viewing, comprised of about 15 to 20 individuals and was run out of an old leaky wooden barracks. That doesn't strike me as a high priority millions of dollars kind of experiment. The experiment also ended concluding that they got nothing useful out of it, i.e. It doesn't work. If they had concluded that it did work in any way, this would still be secret, and they would be using it to spy on Russia, or whatever. Also, just people spending a lot of money on something does not mean that it has scientific validity. It doesn't mean that it's logical. Did you know there are people who make million dollar fishing lures? We find that the greatest discoveries don't come true hard work or intensive labor, but that really the genius somehow is able to access a realm. No, we don't find that. You can't just say that. It's not through hard labor. Einstein, Niels Bohr, none of those guys, none of their peers put any work into their discoveries. They just access another realm. You can't just say, actually, they access another realm. That's, that's not true. If it's a stupid theory you believe in, you can say it's a, it's a theory. You can say, I believe. This guy is my least favorite guy. Of the guys in this Ancient Aliens episode, this is my least favorite Ancient Aliens guy. Are extraterrestrials accelerating the cognitive abilities of a select few, as some ancient astronaut theorists believe? Yeah! No. <laughs> Let's stop there with this episode. It's amazing that they filled a whole episode. It turns out the way they do that is by having about eight minutes of content and then repeating the same thing over and over again, having stock footage of space and just images of Einstein over dramatic music and just repeating the same hypotheticals over and over again. They get a lot of extra time out of adding, as ancient astronaut theorists believe, at the end of some of those hypotheticals. Which is good for my hydration levels, but not for my sanity. So let's move on to the second episode I watched, which is about Satan. Satan was the source of torture and death and destruction. He is the ruler of hell, but is the character known as the Prince of Darkness merely a myth? That's right, this episode is all about Satan. Obviously when I saw this was an episode, this had to be one of the ones I watched. It is weirdly, pro-Satan. I don't know how I feel about this, the show Ancient Aliens kind of shares my interpretation of Satan as a giver of knowledge and freedom to humanity. Obviously I don't think he was an alien, 
I don't think he's real. But there's something there. Satan may well be a person, a god, a, an angel, an E.T., who's been maligned in a sense. Yeah, justice for Satan. Lakeland, Florida, 2012. Hundreds of faithful followers congregate at the Ignited Church to witness the removal of demons from those who believe they're possessed by the devil. Sky loves slapping people in the face with crucifixes. <laughs> yes, this episode features an exorcist preacher. The devil wants to get even. How else to hurt the heart of God to the greatest possible extent, but to harm the beloved of his creation? The thing that God loves most, humanity, human beings. To hurt the heart of God? Didn't God plan everything? Is he not all powerful? If he's all loving and us being hurt by Satan hurts his heart, why doesn't he just destroy Satan? Man, people at the fringes of evangelism are fucking incomprehensible to me. I torment you by the blood of Christ. When I'm battling Satan... I love how casual he is. When I'm battling Satan, if the priest on this show is genuine, and it seems like he probably is, he must think himself pretty fucking badass, like he's battling demons and Satan every day. How long have you had her? A long time. Yeah? yeah. Well, now it's going to be a short time. Torment! Torment! Torment you! Exorcism looks really easy, guys. You just sort of stand there and go, Torment! Torment you! Fuck you, demon! Piss off! I'm a priest. Get out. Once the Watchers begin to interact with humans, they become infatuated with this new species and they become lustful. They came to a point where they wanted to take wives and have children, and so they decided to rebel, create bodies, marry, and bear children. The episode goes on to talk about the Book of Enoch, the apocryphal text that was removed from the Bible, um, and talks about the Watchers and this concept of angelic Watchers deciding to, but you know, becoming lustful of humans. Because we got a lot going for us, let's be real. And the connection that Ancient Aliens is making is that perhaps this story comes from the idea that Ancient Aliens took, like, human form and bred with humans. I guess. Once again, I did watch this whole episode, twice, I have no idea how they made that connection. It just seems like the people on this show had the pre-existing idea that ancient aliens have mated with humans, and thus their reading of the Book of Enoch complements that. When I look at terms such as watchers from heaven, then personally I interpret them as possible extraterrestrials Thanks, Giorgio. That, that does check out. Is it possible that Shamyaza and the other Watchers were extraterrestrial beings that gave humanity the foundations for civilization? No. Thank you for asking. <laughs> Might further evidence be found by examining other ancient myths and legends? Ancient myths and legends aren't evidence. They, they don't contribute to evidence. They're myths and legends. They're, they're classified as myths that means they cannot be evidence. It's like reading Little Red Riding Hood and being like, this is evidence of wolves dressing up as grandmas. That's not how that works. In ancient Samaria, you have these very curious stories of the Anunnaki. They were instructing the Sumerians in various arts of civilization. They had elongated heads. They looked almost like insect type people or what they call reptilian uh-oh i guess at least in this conspiracy the reptilians are the good guys chichen itza was one of the largest and most powerful cities in the mayan world and dominating the site is the great pyramid el castillo oh no when pyramids and serpents collide in a conspiracy video it's not a good sign. Often we'll see Kukul Khan portrayed as half human or half serpent or as a human being coming out of the mouth of a serpent. Hello! <laughs> I don't know why that tickles me, but it does. I'm here to be an instrument of God to cast out the devil, to free human souls. But my mission <coughs> is to get every demon possible out of every possible human being and send them straight to hell. I don't know why maybe it's to get a different perspective but this documentary episode documentary episode this episode of entertainment television that is asserting that satan might actually have been an ancient alien that gifted early humans with advanced technology features an exorcist 
talking about how he spends his days expelling demons that are working for Satan from human beings and sending them to hell, which seems to be the antithesis of this ancient alien Satan theory. I don't get it. I don't know what this is saying. I don't understand what Reverend Bob Larson is doing in this documentary. Maybe it's for balance? It's a weird thing to balance that theory out with. Could the Bible's book of Revelation really be referring to a galactic war, one waged over the ultimate fate of mankind? Definitely not. Was this book written around 95 AD by humans actually about a galactic war? No. <laughs> Obviously fucking not. Who or what is Satan? Is he a demon, the devil, or was he, in fact, a benevolent extraterrestrial being? This is the thing with this show and these hypotheticals. You can just say anything. Is Lucifer using ancient alien technology, blah, blah, blah. I don't know. Is Satan making banana and crisp sandwiches on a beach in Bora Bora? It turns out you can spend 40 minutes asking any weird unanswerable questions you want, then call it a documentary and even Netflix will buy the rights to show it. Ancient Aliens. Here's my opinion. I picked out, remember, the two episodes that most appealed to me. One about Einstein's brain and one about Satan. Quite unique concepts compared with what I've heard of the ancient alien theories. It wasn't about pyramids, even though still one of the episodes did feature pyramids and ancient reptiles. I just came away feeling like each of those shows could have been 10 minutes max and I'd have gotten all the same information. In fact, I'm I'm certain of that. I'm sure I could re-edit this show into 10 minutes just cutting out the information and the questions that they repeat. Even if you're a big, like, ancient alien theorist and you're a fan of this kind of thing, at least the episodes I've watched don't actually give you anything to get jazzed about. There's no actual, like evidence or theories, I know there's no evidence because ancient aliens interacting with Earth is not a thing that we have any evidence of, that there's nothing, there's no crumb of, of stuff. It's just like, here's a cool myth from history, what if it was aliens? And you're like, what if? What if it was pizza? That doesn't mean, it doesn't mean anything to ask those hypotheticals. There's nothing for me that is even a little bit compelling. Like, even in ghost shows, which are way more entertaining, even in that, you get a little bit of dust flying in front of the camera. You get, oh, the temperature drops. Okay, there are, there are ways to explain those things, but at least there are things happening that people can theorize with. Ancient Aliens gives you nothing. It gives you seven people with brilliant hair, ten minutes of deepities, deepities nuts, and the narrator repeating whatever the previous discussion was as a question, like four times. I will never watch this again. Why do people watch this regularly? People find this entertaining? I guess if you're watching it like with a friend, if you are playing it as a drinking game, if you're watching it to criticize it as you watch it, but like going back over the footage once I'd already watched it through once to make my notes and stuff, I was getting fucking bored because it just says nothing. The nothing that it says, it repeats five times. It's boring and stupid. How are there so many seasons of this show? Hey, if you haven't already subscribed, you should consider doing that. And maybe also click the notification button because apparently that's a thing that can help. And maybe my videos don't always come up. If you click the button, then they might, hopefully. If you'd like to hear more from me, do come check out my gaming channel, Little Duck Gaming. I am also live on Twitch three times a week at Emma Little Duck. There was a drop of water on my hand and I just licked it up like a cat. That's embarrassing. If you'd like to support this channel and the stuff that I make, you can become a member. You get some silly emotes and comment priority. The best way to support this channel is via the Patreon. And with that, I must give a big old shout out and a thank you to my giant chickens and colossal quackers over on Patreon, especially Conla. God damn it, Conla. <laughs>
Make sure you leave your thoughts in the comment section down below. Share this video with a friend who you think might like it. And most importantly, have yourselves a very lovely week. And I will see you really soon. Look, my hair calmed down. Over the process of recording this video, my hair has flattened to a normal shape. How did that happen? Probably aliens.